Prince Franco. A Russian mini-submarine, the Priz, is on a secret mission off the coast of Russia. The tiny submarine is trapped 625 feet down. At this depth, the water is just above freezing, and the pressure would crush a man to death instantly. This is the story of what happened to the men of the Priz and the British team who would try to rescue them. During the Cold War, the Soviets built thousands of miles of listening devices along the coast. These underwater antennae are used to detect enemy submarines, but are also a trap for old cables and fishing nets. And now the Priz is caught tight. Yes. Captain Lepichuka fears the worst. He knows that no Russian has ever been saved from a trapped sub. Second in command is Milishevsky. Just 25, he has two young twin daughters. The Priz has emergency canisters on board to provide life-giving oxygen. The men have to estimate how long it'll be before they run out of air and suffocate to death. We were only expecting to be working for six hours. Survival was a race against time. The decisive factor was oxygen. This factor was kyslorod. For over 24 hours, the Russian military tried desperately to rescue them. But eventually, the story leaks out to the international media. Someone half a world away is listening. The news at 7 o'clock on Friday, the 5th of August. Good morning, this is Fran Godfrey. It was a Friday morning and I was looking forward to going home for the weekend uh, to see my family. The Russian Navy is trying to rescue seven sailors trapped in a mini-submarine on the floor of the Pacific. The vessel is stuck more than 600 feet under... Commander Ian Ritchies is in charge of the Royal Navy's submarine rescue team. He knows that for any mission, speed is essential. Once I had heard this news, I thought, there is a responsibility here. I've got to investigate at least and find out if our assets are needed. So there was a very much... I need to get a move on here, um, and I need to get into work very quickly. The vessel is stuck more than 600 feet underwater after becoming... Also listening to the radio report is Stuart Gold. He's in charge of a special machine that could rescue the Priz. Stuart has trained in submarine rescue for 20 years, but has only ever seen action once before. The only real submarine rescue but that I was involved in personally was five years ago when we were involved in the, the Kursk disaster. The Kursk sank to the ocean floor in August 2000. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, refused to accept foreign help until four days had passed. The entire crew, 118 Russian sailors, perished. I guess they had one of their top-class nuclear submarines lying in the seabed and certainly didn't want the British naval submersibles uh, swimming around um, filming this stricken submarine. Certainly it was a frustrating time for us all on board the ship. And um, it was tinged with, with the sadness and regret that um, these people had died. You know, it was 
our fellow uh, submariners in, in, in so many ways, although they were from a, another country. And I think uh, feeling for the families, I suppose there but for the grace of God. Now, exactly five years on, the tragic death of the Kursk crew can be seen as a bad omen for the men on the Priz. The fact that the Priz was working on a secret antenna may make the Russian Navy more reluctant to call for foreign help. And Milishevsky's wife, Yelena, knows that. I was in a terrible state of mind. I was thinking... What if this will be another Kursk? What will I tell my children when they grow up and ask what happened to their daddy? Captain John Holloway, British naval attaché in Moscow, is trying to find out more about the press, but it's difficult. When I knew that this had happened, one of the first things I did once I'd alerted the, the duty officer was to ring up Ian on his mobile. Ian, John Holloway, it's looking pretty grim. He was feeding me information straight off the Russian media. An inspection craft, seven-man crew, sitting at about 190 metres. We were getting as much uh, information as was available at the time, which was important to us. I'm working on it, believe me. No, you'll get what I've got as soon as I've got it, OK? Radio. Bye. In the early stages of this, there was by no means a foregone conclusion that we would actually be asked for help. It was already very marginal as to whether or not anything could be done. While the UK team discussed their options, the Russian mothership has dropped grappling hooks down. They're hoping to pull the Priz up towards the surface. But it's not going well. The Russians don't have the specialist equipment they need to rescue the submariners. But the British do. This is their secret weapon, Scorpio 45. Scorpio can operate far deeper than conventional divers. It's unmanned and controlled from a surface ship. Technically, it's known as an ROV, or remotely operated vehicle. But to engineer Stuart Gold, Scorpio is much more. Scorpio isn't just a machine, it's, um, it's a way of life. Um, it's part of you. Now, I've, I've looked after it for nearly 12 years now. We'll make a joke about it, but we'll give it a pat before it goes in the water. And Once it returns, it's, uh, it's like part of your family returning. Uh, especially if it's been deep. Stuart knows that Scorpio's two arms could be used to cut free the Prez, and crucially, it's portable, small enough to be transported by plane. Vyslav Vladimir, you're the level of kyslora. I don't know what I'm doing. You're doing the requirement. On the sub, the oxygen supply is running out nearly twice as fast as normal. That's because instead of the usual four crew, there are seven men on board. They'll have to make each emergency canister last as long as possible. But it's only a matter of hours before the lack of oxygen will lead to headaches, nausea, unconsciousness and death. <laughs> Everyone was having sad thoughts, but no one said them out loud. I told myself, I'm already six years old, my friends are dying anyway. But regarding the young guys, they were amazing. Take Slava, 25 years old, two young daughters. I can only imagine the storm of emotions he had to endure.
In Moscow, Vladimir Putin decides that he cannot afford another disaster like the Kursk. The Russians ask for foreign help, and the obvious choices are those closest to where Priz is. The Japanese and the Americans. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight. Good evening. There is a drama unfolding tonight, 625 feet beneath the Pacific. We understand the, the time critical situation we're in, and uh, we are doing everything we can to get there as quickly as we, as we possibly can. The Brits haven't even been asked to help, but that's not stopping them. Stuart Gold has already started to pull together a team. However, it's not straightforward. The rescue team don't sit around waiting to be called. They're often on other jobs. Stuart's priority is to find a skilled pilot for Scorpio. Now my first, my senior pilot, who has been with us um, certainly for 15, 15 years, was a name um, called Tom Calvert. He really was the most experienced pilot we had. Well, Tom, eh, we've got a gig on. <laughs> no, it's not an exercise, it's the real thing this time. I found out that he was actually working uh, on a super yacht out in the Mediterranean, so he was obviously too far away to, to help out. Stuart has only one other experienced pilot to call on, Peter Nuttall. If Stuart wants some work done or we're going on exercise, uh, he'll phone me up to see if I'm available. Um, and if I am, then I'll go. Hi, Stuart. What's up? Listen, uh, we've got a rescue on. He never even mentioned the fact that, oh, well, Stuart, by the way, I should be at a wedding. What do we know so far? Yeah. Where is it? Kamchatka. Russia. She wasn't too pleased, obviously, but uh, with I actually said, you know, there's a good chance we'll be called back. So don't, you know, don't panic yet. I'll leave for Presswick in ten minutes. The rest of the rescue team is scattered all over Britain. Presswick Airport near Glasgow is the rendezvous point. A Nimrod is diverted from a training mission over the Irish Sea to pick up Ian Ritchie's from Bristol. Under Hercules flies other team members up to Scotland. Stuart and Scorpio are also on their way to Presswick to meet the others. But even now, the Russians haven't agreed to British help. Over in Moscow, John Holloway is getting the offer ready. I then had to take a, a diplomatic note into the Russian Minister of Defence. And um, it being a Friday, these things always happen on Fridays. The Minister of Defence officially closed at 2 o'clock, and so, so we had to arrange for them to stay open. And I went in there, explained what the UK offer was and the time scales. I then had to wait for about 15 minutes while they, they considered it. I spoke to somebody in the Ministry of Defence in London and I said that there's probably only 20% chance that our offer would be accepted. Putin has already accepted help from the USA and Japan, but would he want the British too? The thing that made it work was I think there was sufficient pressure coming from the top levels of the Russian government. Captain Golovy, we are ready to accept your request. Thank you very much. I'm sure that, that President Putin had told the Minister of Defence to, to make every effort to make sure that these um, seven people were saved. Who? Who? Americans? Нет? Англичане? Отлично. Ну что, господа подводники? Отличные новости. К нам идет на помощь английский экипаж. Надо отметить. Mm -hmm. Извини, что не водка. Когда? Скоро. Потапов, 
Достать теплые комбинезоны. Есть товарищ капитан. Ислав Владимирович, включите аварийный номер капитана. Иванов! It was important to keep everyone very busy, so that nobody would have gloomy thoughts or doubts. By now, the prison is at 5 degrees centigrade, the same temperature as the ocean outside. Dampness from condensation makes it feel colder, but the fact is, they'll suffocate before they freeze to death. There was no beginning, nor an end to a day. There was a long, liquid time. Honestly, in my mind I did say goodbye, knowing the seriousness of our situation. The British team is ready to go. Ian Ritchie's is team leader. Stuart Gold is responsible for Scorpio. Peter Nuttall will pilot Scorpio. Will Forrester is winchman. Charlie Sillett is the crane operator. The feeling was, we want to get out and get on with this job. This is what we've trained for. This gives us an opportunity to prove that our training is worthwhile, and it's our whole raison d'etre. The biggest problem for us was, could we get sufficient fuel on the aircraft um, to get there with suitable reserves for diversion? And the answer to that question was, we couldn't. Maximum weight, takeoff weight of the C-17 is 585,000 pounds. We got airborne from, from Prestwick weighing 585,000 pounds. With, with less fuel than I ideally would have wanted. And we still sort of didn't believe it until we were actually loaded up and trundling down the runway. That's when it sort of dawned on us we were actually going to go to Russia. There are only 37 hours of oxygen left on the submarine, and the flight to the Russian Far East will take 10 and a half hours. It was very, very bright, uh, very noisy. The floor was actually very cold. So um, I tried to read, tried to take my mind off it a bit too. That was when you did have the opportunity to stop and take stock. And that's what it started all the worries because we still didn't have sufficient information to, to know what it was we were, get, we were really letting ourselves in for. We spoke about the conditions that they were probably um, experiencing, what they were maybe trying to do to get uh, out of the situation. It's the vision of a watery grave in, in, in a lot of ways, and, and it would have been very difficult to get that vision out of, out of their minds, I would think. Once you move, you have to struggle for 15 minutes afterwards to calm down and stop gasping for air. We could not move a lot. Even bringing up a can of water was exhausting. In Petropavlovsk, the wife of the captain, Tatiana Lepachuka, is praying for a rescue team to get there in time. Something inside me tells me that certain things will end happily, others not. So I was pleading with God not only for my husband, but also for all the men on board. Because the oxygen is finished. 
Они все там пойдут. Они все Иди уже... сюда. Помолись со мной. Помолись со мной. Я была уверена, что... I was sure that that be saved only if there was enough air. That was the problem. Even my husband's father was saying that there was no oxygen left. Они все там уже погибли. Мой муж погиб. Понимаешь, мой муж погиб. Помолись со мной. Amazingly, the British are the first of the rescue teams to arrive as the Americans have had to stop to refuel their planes. The Japanese team are still two days away by sea. The Brits have to get their equipment off the plane and onto a ship as soon as possible. But Petropavlovsk is a remote spot, and the British team soon realize that the Russians' antiquated machinery could prove to be a fatal stumbling block. All they had been able to procure was a, a, a very ropey-looking forklift truck, uh, which the windows fell out of when it came into use. And we were nervously managed to offload Scorpio uh, using, the, using the forklift truck. Uh, but everything else, uh, the, the, there, was, there was no um, sensible way of, of, of offloading without the, the correct equipment. It was, it was horrendous. The thought that uh, we were never going to get this, this gear off this plane. Um, it's cold, it's wet, it's damp, there's a lot hanging about, people are frustrated, um, uh, tempers are, being, are getting frayed. You know that time's marching on and things aren't happening. But then the Americans land. For the British, they will be the 7th Cavalry. They have flown special unloading equipment out with them. The Americans realize that their own rescue kit will take much longer to unload, so they decide to help the British team first. It was like a small, like a small tank. You could hear it way before it actually came. Oh, I was like, yeah, great, we're, we're going to do something now. And once it appeared, um, we had the containers out of the plane, I reckon within 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I hated the local news journalists. They're sneaking around and gossiping. I was shocked when the press was trying to get in when my younger son was at home. And when they persisted, I told him to tell them, go to hell. Scorpio and the UK team are making their way to the harbour, where a ship should be waiting for them. It was very dark, uh, very little light, not very many people going about. If you can imagine a James Bond movie with, with pipes and steam and the odd car, some lorries, and when we arrived at the dock, we were told at that time by a dock official that we weren't getting in. That there was no way we were getting in. What's going on? I don't know. Why can't we get in? Tell him I want to speak to his commanding officer. He's not available. This was midnight. Midnight, one o'clock in the morning on, on, on a Saturday night, Sunday morning, on a, on a rainy night. You know, no one's impressed. You really felt as though you were in a 1970s Cold War spy film in some ways. And it, it, and it, it was at that point I saw the whole thing unravelling. 
we were at the gate for half an hour. I remember we were eventually allowed in and taken down to the ship. And I, I think you wondered what was going to happen next. At the docks, they meet up with the man in charge of the rescue from the Russian side, Dmitry Podkopayev. It's a stroke of good luck. Joe, my friend. Dmitry Tabari said this is uh, Captain Holloway. I had met up with them in Italy at training exercises just two weeks before. It was so good to see them again, and I think they were glad to see me too. In Italy, I'd had the chance to see how the Scorpio operated. When we arrived on the jetty to get out of that bus and walk up the brow and see this shock of blonde hair and realize that we had a friend on board was, 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 was absolutely wonderful. Dimitri was part of the Kursk rescue team and so is all the more determined to do everything to save the Pris crew. He has another motivation too. I took this very personally because I knew three of the crew very well. The civilian expert on board was 60 years old and I was worried whether he would survive. We were running out of time and that really added to the pressure. Some of the crew of the Prez are struggling more than others. Unknown to Dimitri, the captain is most at risk. <laughs> Lepetyuha had had a third of his lung removed and so he suffered the worst because of the lack of air. The cold, the lack of water and oxygen made him the weakest. The Scorpio and the UK rescue team have now set sail. Also on the ship is the wife of the captain of the Priz, Tatiana. She's pleaded to come on board and will watch the whole attempt at rescue unfold. As they travel the 50 miles to the position of the Russian sub, they begin to plan the rescue. The team usually would operate Scorpio from a surface ship that can stay in a fixed position. Normally the position on, on any working ship is a dynamic position in DP, which basically takes satellite signals and converts them through a computer and locks the uh, ship into one position on one heading so it doesn't move. The ship didn't have that, it had anchors, um, which unfortunately the water was too deep for its anchors. No problem, no problem. It's a very big problem. Dungeon. If we can't hold the ship stable, we can't operate Scorpio. We'll, we'll end up wrecking her on the sub. Okay, so uh, we use the two boats to hold the ship steady, yeah? It's possible, yes? Well. If we get a flat calm, perhaps. If the weather was bad, it didn't matter where you were, whether you're on the west coast of Scotland, Loch U or, or Kelf Lacauche, or if you're in the Pacific or the North Sea, if the weather's bad, that's it. There's very little you can do. So, please. On their way to the rescue site, Dimitri goes through yeah, diagrams yeah, yeah. and video footage of the stricken sub. Okay, okay, yeah. All of that w then gave us to a, a much better idea of what the problem was that was facing us. How many cables do well, you think are, going to, are there? Okay. 10, 12, I don't know. And Stuart and I both independently formed the view and said almost at the same time to one another, we can do this. We can, um, we can cut the cable and the net. Fantastic, fant wonderful. 
Before Scorpio can be put in the water, Stuart needs to carry out some pre-dive tests. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Zero. One camera out of four. And you're thinking, oh my God, what's this? This is problems I've never seen before. With no sonars, basically you've no eyes. You know, you might, you might be able to put a thing in the water, but without knowing where you're going, it's a waste of space. I was very worried. Uh, it was very, a very, very tense, very, very sweaty moment. Eventually, uh, with great relief to everyone concerned, we got it fully, fully operational and uh, ready to dive. And when they finally arrive at the site of the Priz, they get a lucky break. The sea is calm. The crane operator lowers the Scorpio into the water. It has taken the UK rescue team 36 hours to get here, and fast as that is, the submariners only have 11 hours of oxygen remaining. Any major problems, and the seven trapped men might run out of air. <laughs> The young guys started vomiting. We tried to replace the oxygen canister, but already we couldn't do it fast enough because we had run out of physical strength. All our actions and thinking had slowed down. Actually to get her over for the first time and into the water was a, was a, was a huge relief and Peter started to dive her at that point. Sitting beside the, the sonar system uh, and watching the, the depth, uh, the depth gauge count down the meters to you know, 100, 150, 190, nearly 200 meters before we actually uh, came upon this huge um, display uh, on the sonar system, um, uh, we could see it. It was it was bigger, far, far bigger than we'd ever seen it uh, before. Um, and had I not had some drawings done for, uh, for me uh, by Dimitri, I would never have believed the size of the structure uh, in the water down in uh, down in the depths. What's that? antenna. antenna. We homed in on the onto the. Uh, antenna and uh, we got a good visibility of the antenna and bit we couldn't see the prez. It's not there. Dimitri explained to us which end to go to. I can't pilot in Russian, Dimitri. No, right, right. Starboard. There she is. <laughs> Fantastica, Fantastica. Bang into the sub, let them know we're here. It's basically to let the people know inside that there's somebody on the outside trying to get them out. So we did give him a good rap. Oh. 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 We could hear it. When it was diving past, we could see it in the periscope, and then we were just listening to the pleasant murmur of the foreign machine. Hey, ребята, кафе у Сергея открыто. Сухарики заказывали, а? <laughs> this is why the UK team have travelled halfway around the world. That's good. But it's a frustrating operation as they struggle to grab one of the cables. Peter Nuttall attempts to keep the Scorpio as steady as possible. Okay. While Stuart operates the arm and reaches for a cable. Anything I, d I did with my arm, it followed. It has open and close, wrist, wrist will rotate. 
the sh shoulder movement side to side, um, a, a vertical movement, uh, your elbow will bend. So actually using it um, can get uh, very intense, uh, can get very concentrated. He's... It's all right, I'll get that. All right, yep. We tried to talk and move as little as possible to save oxygen. You could feel the lack of oxygen strongly. Nobody knew how long it was all going to take. <coughs> you basically put out your mind that there's seven people in that submarine. You put into the mind that you are getting that submarine off the bottom, and that's what you're doing. The pressure's there, certainly. Oh, God, that net. I'm very wary of the net. If, if we'd have gone in that fish net and we couldn't have got out of it, then that would have been us finished. That vehicle would probably still be there. You know, Scorpio would probably still be stuck in that net. And uh, we'd be on our way, we'd have been on our home, way home very shortly. Um, yeah, I mean, that would have been the end of the operation. Okay. That's good. That's good. Eventually, a cable is gripped and guided into the cutting arm. Okay. okay. Well, that's good. That's very good. Cut. <sighs> Great. Excellent. <coughs> very good. But because many of the cables are held tightly against the hull, they're difficult to grasp. There's something wrong. I'm losing manoeuvrability. What's the problem? What's that? We're losing oil pressure. Three quarters way through the job, the first thing that popped up was we got um, a low oil uh, alarm in our main termination. Now this termination itself is where all the power cables come into an oil-filled junction box. And then they're distributed to the electronic tanks uh, and to the thrusters themselves. So now, obviously, you can imagine you don't want water in beside where there's lots of heavy electrics. Ah, shit! Oh, God. What happened? One of the, uh, one of the flanges in the cutting arm has bent. Both of them, or? No, no, just, uh, just the one, but, uh, uh, it looks like it. Yeah. Now, um, it was pretty obvious to us that uh, there'd be no way, it would be very, very difficult to, to uh, have cables pass through into the cutter itself. There's another fault. A propeller begins to malfunction. OK, bring her up. Нет, продолжайте резать. Keep cutting. Dimitri, look, we 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 can't cut seaweed with a flange like that. You know, if we bring her up and we get her on board, then we can look at the oil leak as well. Нет, он, she must stay down there. Продолжайте. Keep cutting. Keep cutting. We need a decision. We said to Dimitri, right, well, we're going to have to recover on board and, and fix this. And he was very keen that we should sort of carry on working. We said, well, look, Dimitri, we can't actually cut anything more right now because, because the cutter doesn't work. OK, bring it up. There was a nasty moment when Scorpio broke down and left. I wondered if it was ever coming back. How long will it take to return? Scorpio is now lifted out of the sea. There are three problems, and they must be dealt with quickly. But uh, it was it was frustrating to, to have to have to recover when things w w were going well. I mean, you know, we, we we felt that we were we were definitely winning at, at this stage. I promised Dimitri. I, I promised we'll be back in within fifteen to twenty minutes. 
certainly could have went wrong. It could have, it could have escalated, especially the propeller one. Um, sometimes it, it could be it could get jammed on. The flange of the cutting arm has to be taken off and repaired, and the oil of Scorpio has to be replaced. By now, the seven men are on their last canister of air. What little remains is foul and thick with moisture. They wonder if all of them will even survive for the few hours they have oxygen remaining. I took out a cigarette, smelt it, held it in my hand and put it back. It helped. Within just 20 minutes, Scorpio is ready to go back into the water. This is their last chance. Again, Scorpio begins to cut the cables away. Every half hour, they phoned me and told me step by step what was being done. One cable cut, then another. Yeah, this is good. Just... Yeah. yeah, that's very good. That is very good. There you go. And cut. Cutting. Yes, good. And cut. <laughs> Great. Finally, all the cables are cut, except for one. It's no good. I can't get the last cable without putting Scorpio at risk. Sub's free anyway, and the blow the ballast short load. What is going on? We're going to leave the last cable. It's, it, it's too difficult to reach. The last cable is on the far side of the press. The only way to get to it is if Peter pilots Scorpio directly underneath the press. But in this position, Scorpio might also become trapped. I'm afraid it's out of the question. If Scorpio's umbilical becomes tangled, it will lose the lock. You must order them to blow the ballast. There was this huge risk. They were asking us to, 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 put, it, to put Scorpio into a position that I considered would, 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 would endanger Scorpio um, and the fact that we would ne wouldn't get Scorpio back and, I think, put the guys' lives back, back at, at greater risk because we'd have got, the, got us all entangled in the, in, in the same snotty heap. We totally, you must cut the last cable. We are in charge here. Why don't you go and get the Admiral? Oh, those guys suffocate below. Ничего не делайте, понимаете? Do nothing. Understand? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <sighs> Sergei Belozarov sprinkles water over the oxygen-producing equipment to try and eke out as much as possible. <sighs> delay was sort of in the region of half an hour and I think I think that you know there was frustration that that we've we've done the job um, let's get this thing to the surface because there's no point in in, in, in waiting around this is outrageous didn't come halfway across the world to let them die no that is it you must cut last cable oh. Look, if we, if she's stuck 
Вы не понимаете, you don't understand. She can blow only once ballast. Then we do it now. Алло. Они не будут резать последний кабель. Нет. Значит, когда им дали команду... We gave the order to the submarine to blow the tank, so it could rise to the surface. But there was no confirmation whether they'd even received this command. That was awful. When apparently everything is done, and there is just one thing left to do. And we didn't hear anything from them. The men on the surface fear the worst. They think the crew may already be unconscious. She's disappeared. Uh, Dimitri went wild and just charged out of the, out of the control cabin on, onto the onto the deck of the, uh, of, of, the of, of the of the ship. But poor Stuart and Peter had to stay there because they still had the ROV down there. And we all started looking for, for where we expected Priz to return to the surface. In the meantime, they, they the, the, the other two held. Scorpio deep for a while. The aim was to try and keep her out of the way of it, of, of Priz returning to the surface. What's happened? You know, uh, she must have stuck in a cable car. I wasn't 100% confident that it, it, it was free because there's always something else hanging on to it somewhere else and it will raise, rise maybe 20, 30 feet and get caught again you know, on something else that's holding it. Time seems to stand still, and, and we had this, this situation then. We were all stood there thinking, you know, that, 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 that time was rushing past, and, it, and I don't think it really was. It probably took a minute to a minute and a half, but that minute and a half seemed to take forever. I was on deck when the submarine surfaced, but of course I was looking in the wrong direction. I remember looking out to port and someone shouting whatever um, in Russian. Dmitry went charging off over in that direction and I just followed and, and uh, there it was on the surface. There are less than five hours of air.